Hello everyone, Miss Barron here. So today I'm going to be going over the limiting reactants and percent yield lab. So you're going to watch two videos. This is the first one. Uh, there's another one after this where I walk you through the lab and I show you how I did the lab and provide all necessary data so you can complete the analysis portion and calculations of this lab. So I'm going to start here. So again, as I said, you're going to watch two videos. I'm going to perform the reaction between copper metal. It's just this copper wire that I'm going to use and silver nitrate. That's this stuff. It is a, um, it's kind of like a salt. Okay. And that's going to be dissolved into a solution. And I'm going to react those two together. One of those is the limiting reactant and the other you're going to have excess of. So part of your goal in this lab is to figure out which of those two reactants is the limiting reactant. You're also going to calculate the percent yield of the product. And again, I'm gonna provide all the necessary data that you need to complete this lab. So as we've already talked about, uh, stoichiometry or the stoichiometric relationship between two reactants. Often one reactant is lacking um, such that it runs out and the other reactant is used up. Um, in such a case, the reactant that runs out first is therefore limiting the output of the reaction. That's limiting reactant so that only so much product is generated and then you have excess or leftover of another reactant. So here's the reaction that I'm going to be carrying out and you're going to have to refer back to this equation when you do your calculations. So we have copper and silver nitrate, that's the AgNO3, and we're going to get copper nitrate, which is going to be a solution, and we're going to get uh, solid silver, which is Ag. So this is a single replacement reaction um, in which the copper metal replaces the uh, silver, if you guys remember from chapter 8 last semester, we talked about activity series and what can replace what. And in this case, a reaction will occur. Copper replaces the silver. Silver is by itself. You get that silver metal, and then you get copper nitrate, which ends up forming a, uh, it ends up dissolving in a solution. I'm going to begin with a certain amount of silver nitrate. I'm going to provide that information to you and a certain amount of copper. One of them is limiting. You're going to figure out which one is limiting. And then um, the product that we're going to be focusing on, you're going to figure out what the percent yield is of that product. So I have the following materials that I'm going to be using to carry out this lab. And I'm going to walk you through the procedure part here. Follow along so you can answer this question here. I'll continue with the procedure and providing the data. And then the second video, because I have to let this dry overnight, you will get the rest of the data um, from the following day. And then here are all the calculations. So I'm gonna start with the procedure here. So for the first step in the procedure, we're gonna weigh a quantity of silver nitrate to the nearest thousands place. And we're gonna use weighing paper and a balance to do that. And then I'm carefully going to add it to a test tube. So we're going to be using a very small amount of silver nitrate. I've already added it to this weigh boat um, to make things a little bit easier. Um, I'm wearing gloves because silver nitrate can stain your fingers. Um, it's not dangerous or anything. It's only dangerous if you um, ingest it. So this is what we call weighing paper. So we're going to go ahead and put that on the balance. We're going to make sure that we tear it or zero it out. And then I'm going to add my silver nitrate to it. And I'm going to add just a very, very small amount. All right, I'm literally going to only use that much. I'm going to have to clean this up later. No worries, that's why I have gloves on. That's why I'm going to clean up when I am done. So we have for our silver nitrate, so for your data, okay, so under the data section in your OneNote where it says mass of silver nitrate, you're going to have 0, .0 um, give it a moment, it gets really touchy sometimes.
We're going to say 0 0.041. We're going to record that 0 0.041 grams of silver nitrate. And I'm going to go ahead and add that to a test tube and move on to my next step. So I added my silver nitrate very carefully to this test tube. You can see it in the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and add some water. It doesn't have to be a perfect amount. I just want to dissolve this. You know, it looks, it looks a little bluish. I just want to get the silver nitrate in there to dissolve. So a couple ways to do that is one, you can, we're going to put a stopper on top. Okay. And we could just shake this, okay, to get it to dissolve. However, I'm going to use something a little bit more fancy. So this is called a vortex machine, okay? So if I go ahead, oh, we're gonna just go ahead and turn it on. So if I turn this on, okay, it's going to help vortex this, okay? So mix that solution. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing this until I get the silver nitrate to completely dissolve, and then I'll move on to my next step. All right, so now that our silver nitrate has been dissolved in our test tube, okay, and again, I had 0 0.041 grams of silver nitrate that I dissolved. Now we're going to move on to our copper wire. So it looks something like this. It's kind of hard to see it. It's a really, really thin copper wire. Okay, so it's not really going to weigh that much. So I've already teared the balance from last time. I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and weigh my copper wire. Like I said, it's a very, very small amount. Let's give the balance a second to register that. Oh, let's try again. So I have such a small amount that's really having a hard time registering it. I'm going to go ahead and push it over a little bit. Okay, give me one second. All right, I went ahead and got a slightly big, bigger piece of that copper wire. Okay, so for our data collection under the mass of copper wire, we're going to write 0 0.03 grams. So 0. I'm sorry, 0 0.003 grams of that copper wire. So for my next step, I'm going to go ahead and add that copper wire to this silver nitrate solution. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm not going to crinkle it up the piece of wire into a ball or anything. I'm going to try to make sure that as much surface area as possible is being exposed, okay, to the copper wire. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, show you guys in just a second. All right, so I went ahead, I got, you could see that copper wire in there, okay. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put this on the vortex machine for just a second or two, and you're going to start to see a reaction between the copper and the silver nitrate. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. And you're going to answer that, you're going to use what you're going to see in that reaction to answer the question. As the copper disappears, observe the nature of the solution's color change, however faint it may be, and note it here. Okay, so I'm going to try to do my best to get that reaction to occur with the copper wire and the silver nitrate solution. I'm just using the vortex machine here. All right, you can see that. All right, it's doing its vortex thing. All right, let's turn this off for a second. All right, so you guys know copper is pretty shiny, right? So the copper, I know it's kind of hard to tell, it's starting to get this like dark coating on the surface of it, okay? So normally copper, you guys know it's really shiny, okay? 
Um, it's starting to turn almost like this black color. And you can actually kind of see at the bottom, I'm starting to get a little bit of a black or dark precipitate. So use that to help you answer that question. I'm going to keep doing this, which it takes a while, until this copper is completely gone. And then I will get back to you guys. All right, so after putting this through the vortex and letting it settle, you can see that I have this precipitate at the bottom. So just to recap what we did so far. So I took the silver nitrate, which is AgNO3, that solution, and I put the copper wire in that, right? We knew that that would have a reaction, a single replacement reaction. Okay, and we let that reaction occur and go, and this is our final product, okay? So again, we're trying to figure out if the copper or the AgNO3, the silver nitrate, is the limiting reactant. And the products that we have here is one, there's silver actually in the bottom here. I know it doesn't look like how you would expect silver to be, but there's silver in the bottom here. And I also have in the solution is the copper nitrate. So I'm actually gonna pour off the copper nitrate so I only have the silver product remaining. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. All right, so I poured off as much of that as possible, that uh, product, the solution, which was the copper nitrate, CuNO32. Now what I'm going to do, because I just want to find out how much silver that I got here, okay, how much product was produced. So to do that, I'm going to take this piece of filter paper, which I have already weighed. So if you go to your... Uh, data, all right, the mass of the filter paper is 0 0.993 grams, okay, and that is the mass of the filter paper. You should write that down for your data, 0 0.993 grams for the mass of the filter paper. Now, I just fold it just to make it a little bit easier, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rest of this on here, okay? So there's my silver, okay? I'm gonna use a little bit of water just to get the rest of that out of there. And I'm going to put the silver on this and I'm going to let it dry overnight so that all of that solution can be evaporated so we're just left with the silver, which is that solid gray stuff that you see. And tomorrow then we'll check it, we'll weigh it to figure out how much silver that we got, which is our product.